Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and uh, uh, I'd like to welcome you. This is my welcome lecture for uh, the uh, Info 691, Sections 207 and 208 in the spring of 2019. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at uh, page one of the weekly schedule. And the weekly schedule is the way that I convey to you all of the content and assignments and things that are important for uh, each week of the course. Okay, and um, as some of you may say, well, uh, you know, why didn't you put that into Canvas? Uh, and uh, my answer is uh, this. Uh, first of all, uh, I've been doing this for about, uh, I think about five years. And um, so Canvas uh, wasn't even around then. Uh, second of all, I teach at two universities. Uh, so I've got uh, more than one of those learning management uh, systems like uh, Canvas. And they change from time to time. We just went here at UWM, we just went from uh, D2L to Canvas in the current uh, semester. So the official place to get information about uh, content, about assignments, about classes um, is in the weekly schedule app. Okay, so what is the weekly schedule app? Well, let's uh, back up. Let's go to the index. This is the weekly schedule for our course. And there's a link uh, to it in the syllabus. There's a link to it on our uh, Canvas uh, site. And here's the URL for our uh, course. And it takes you to an index page. And that index page shows uh, all the weeks in the semester and the day that they start and the day that they end. Now, for instance, the week that we're in right now, uh, today, January 22nd, uh, is a little bit later. Normally, weeks will start on a Monday. Uh, but this week, because of the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, birthday holiday, uh, uh, it didn't start until uh, today, the 22nd. And... Uh, Weeks uh, typically end on a Sunday, uh, Sunday night at 11.55 uh, p.m. So uh, week one's a short week, and then we have some short weeks. Uh, uh, well, the last week's a short week because it's only uh, six days long. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a typical week the current week that we're in. Okay. Another thing I want to show you is uh, week 10 is a popular week. I'm sorry, week nine. It's our spring break. So we won't be doing anything that week. You will, you will have half off that week. And the very last uh, week in the schedule Week number uh, 17 is not one that we use in my uh, classes. It's a combination of exam period, and we don't have an exam in this course, uh, and graduation, and of course that's not part of what we need to do. So uh, to go back out here to uh, the index page, uh, we're going to be using weeks uh, 1 through 8, and uh, 10 through 16. Now, have I populated all the weekly schedule pages? No, I haven't. Why? Well, I think you already know from some of the messages I left is that I had a pretty serious illness over the uh, semester break, and I've uh, just really recovered. In fact, there's a certain point of view that says I'm not totally recovered uh, yet, uh, but I'm well on my way. Uh, so to the extent that this is appearing uh, just at the dot of the beginning of the semester, 
please accept my apologies. You should have plenty of time to do everything you have to do, but uh, if it causes you some anxiety, uh, please accept my apology. Um, uh, so all I've done is to populate weeks one, two, and three, and you'll notice that these week numbers, these are the link to the weekly schedule pages. So week one's been populated. Uh, click on the next link. Week two's been populated. Uh, click on the next link. Week three's been populated. And click on the next week. And now you get into the under construction. Uh, within about a week, I should have the rest of the content up. Uh, I've taught this. This will be the third time I'm teaching this course. I taught it at UWM um, uh, a year ago in the spring. Um, I taught it in the fall down at the, the high school at the University of Illinois. Um, I'm actually teaching it again there in the, in the spring right now, and I'm uh, teaching it here. So it's been taught twice, and I'm teaching a uh, uh, two different uh, sections of it at two different high schools uh, right now. Okay? And I keep improving it and finding little bugs or little improvements. And uh, so it takes me a little bit of uh, time to transcribe the schedule to make sure that every copy of it that I, I produce has all the recent improvements and updates in it. Uh, okay. Now, Something else that you should know about the weekly schedule application is that uh, it's not very high technology. Uh, this is a static website, in a sense. By the time the server gets its hands on it, it's a static website that I generate out of, out of a pretty complex XML document. Um, and uh, something that's unfortunate is that uh, uh, browsers are very bad at uh, detecting changes uh, in the content of page, uh, pages that it thinks are a static website. Uh, and so it'll cache a page and you'll go to that page uh, and, and you'll say, oh, geez, nothing's changed on week one. Whereas in fact, if you were to click refresh, uh, you would find out that it had. So one of the things that I want to ask you to do, I realize that it's a little bit old school, is whenever you come to a weekly schedule page, like when we go down to number two, refresh it to make sure that you've got the current version of the page. Okay. Um, I wish that there was a, a dynamic application um, to uh, deliver this content. In fact, uh, I've had one plan for a while, a Django-based web app. Uh, but like the cobbler's children, we have the problem that there's always uh, something else to uh, create instead. So there you go. Okay, so let's go back to week one. And let's uh, talk about what we're doing this week. Uh, we have the syllabus. We're going to talk about that. Okay, that's uh, primarily what my uh, lecture here is going to be about. Okay, um, we have a link down here under required recordings for... Uh, the lecture that that I'm recording right uh, right here. So again, when you come back here, and after I have uh, posted the link, when you refresh the page, well, this link's going to pop up right here, and you'll be able to click on it. Now, uh, before that, take the time to play this uh, tutorial video on tips on how to play my videos. Uh, you can probably tell that I, I, uh, I probably speak slower than you might be able to listen. Okay? Uh, and when you're in a hurry, 
Oh, that can be pretty frustrating. So I've got some techniques that are documented on that tips video that show you how to speed up and or slow down the playback rate on a YouTube video um, in order that you can listen just at the rate you want to listen to right now. Now, I'll tell you, I listen to mine if I want to refresh uh, my memory about uh, one of the tutorial videos or the lecture. I, 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 I listen to it at twice the natural rate. So I listen to it at uh, 2.0. Of course, I know what I'm going to say. I mean, by the time it starts, <laughs> I start to hear it. I go, oh, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, so could I listen to it that fast if I hadn't already heard it? No, probably not. So uh, play the tips. There's a lot of encouragement there and, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of how to about how to fill it with the speed uh, dynamically uh, and get just the experience that you want because that's what I want you to have. Okay. Uh, Class participation. Uh, we have, in this course, we have uh, some amount of class of participation through posting uh, to forums. We have a uh, we have a posting here in week one called Introduce Yourself, which is how we're going to get to know each other. And then we have one in week 10 called Next steps in which we're going to kind of talk about where we want to go with uh, Django after the course is over. Uh, and uh, these will account for your uh, participation uh, grade. Now something that I haven't talked about yet is up here on Tuesday uh, today. Um, every Tuesday uh, from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we're going to have an optional, uh, which means come if you want to, uh, online lab session. Okay, and we had one this evening. Uh, nobody showed. That happens often in week one, especially when you just got the, uh, the schedule and the syllabus out late the day before okay but it's a it's a great opportunity um, uh, to drop by for help okay um, and um, I I will wait and uh, and see uh, how you guys would like to make use of the time. Um, uh, the kinds of things that we do. Well, when uh, most weeks we have a coding assignment, okay? Uh, one question that comes up is, uh, well, what was the right answer? Now, I do my best to publish uh, my version of what I consider the right answer to be. But maybe you've got questions about it, okay? So we usually uh, start by talking about uh, prior assignments. And, um, you know, why did we do it this way? Why didn't we do it some other way, et cetera? Um, then we, we've got the current week uh, coding assignment. Well, I'm having trouble with it here. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at it together and see if we can find the solution to that. Okay. Uh, your final project will be a project that you select. And so you're going to, uh, you're going to have to start thinking pretty early about what your final project's going to be. Uh, this is a great time to talk about it and hear what other people have to say. Um, it, Graduate students in this course will be doing a framework evaluation uh, paper. Well, what's that all about? What? How do I choose a framework other than the Django framework to e evaluate? Well, great discussions for these online lab uh, sessions. So, um, 
um, it can be a great experience. I always enjoy them. And so I'm, I'm hoping to see people uh, come by next week. Okay, now, so because this is an online course, uh, uh, again, on uh, Tuesday the 22nd at a particular time, there's an online lab session. Uh, the weekly assignments a deadline is uh, the weekend, Sunday at 11.55 uh, p.m. I sometimes will take uh, some of those things that are due for Sunday and I'll pull them out and do an additional deadline. The, the date and the time are the same, but usually these are um, these have a different kind of character. Now, in this case, it's the computing uh, setup. So I didn't want you guys to be so um, distracted by the computing setup activities that you didn't see um, uh, the more learning oriented activities that I, I wanted you to do. Um, in this case, I want you to uh, to install uh, the software that we're going to be using on your computer. So we're going to be using Anaconda. We're going to be using uh, PyCharm a Professional. Uh, Anaconda is free. Uh, PyFarm, PyCharm Professional is free to us. Okay. Um, it's free to university people. Uh, we're going to be using version control using Git and a Git uh, a graphical client that's uh, free called Source Tree. I want you to do those. And uh, I want you to, to set up a, a Bitbucket account. Okay. I've got some links about where to find the software that we need. And I've got some uh, tutorials to play, typically one for Windows 10, one for Mac OS. These were recorded back in the fall, so they should be pretty current. Okay, so that's what we're doing this week. So um, are there any hand-ins this week? No, but there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, so uh, get ready and get it done. Okay, what if he gets stuck? Well, uh, one place to come is to come to the online office hours. Uh, the other is to uh, go to our help desk portal that's associated with this course. And the two people who are working on the teaching this course in their current semester are uh, me, uh, uh, Kevin Trainer and uh, Julie L Lisser, who is uh, the TA. And um, one of the things that we do is that we monitor this uh, help desk uh, for all kinds of uh, requests and questions from, from you. Um, people who get stuck uh, trying to install something. Uh, people who are working on a coding assignment and get stuck. Um, all those kinds of things. All right. Um, what can we do? Well, one, we can help you over the help desk. Uh, two, uh, on the help desk, we can arrange to meet you on the GoToMeeting platform and you can show us your screen and we can figure it out from there. Uh, sometimes if we're working on uh, a Django uh, project, uh, we ask you to zip up the project. Um, you're able to attach it to the uh, ticket on the service desk uh, and we download it and we run it and we see what we think is wrong. So we'll do a lot to help and a lot to get you unstuck. Um, and the two key avenues for that is one, this uh, uh, online lab session, and two, the, uh, uh, the help desk. Okay? And 
more about the help desk uh, soon. Okay, so that's week one. Let's talk about week two. So let's go to week two. Let's remember to refresh the page just for the heck of it. I know it hasn't changed because I haven't changed it, but you wouldn't know that, would you? Um, we're going to do a lot of tutorials in this uh, class. And uh, in uh, week two, we're going to do the Django Girls uh, tutorial. Uh, Django Girls is a very popular organization that teaches uh, women to code who, who don't have a coding background. Uh, and what they, what they teach them is uh, Django. Okay. And of course, uh, Django is the major uh, tool that we're going to be working with in our course. Now, why are we doing their uh, tutorial first? Well, it, it, this, this assignment for week two, um, this is the content that they cover in a one day uh, Django Girls event. Okay, uh, each, each of the attendees works independently. Uh, typically they each have a laptop. Um, there are coaches. Uh, I've been a coach uh, before. Um, we're intending to run a Django Girls event at uh, SOAS uh, sometime in the coming semester. And uh, there'll be opportunities for people like you to be coaches if you'd like to be a coach. Uh, they get people with all kinds of backgrounds. Uh, people who are uh, fairly competent. At, at the related uh, technologies, uh, people like yourself are expected to finish this whole uh, tutorial in that uh, one day session. And I've done it myself and I had a, a group of people who did it. Now they get people who don't even know Python. So uh, what do they learn at, in a one day session? Well, they get started with Python. You know, that's it. So they set their expectations to uh, their audience. Um, but one of the things I really like about the Django Girls uh, tutorial is you get to build a blog um, and it's done. It works. Okay. Now, the, uh, the main tutorial that we're going to do, uh, we're not going to do the tutorial from... Uh, the textbook. The pink textbook has has another blog uh, tutorial, and uh, I decided that we wanted to be more uh, database oriented. So I've created a custom uh, tutorial for this uh, class called Easy University. It's a uh, it's a simplified, hence easy, um, university record keeping uh, system it has a much more significant uh, database component than uh, these uh, blogs do um, and uh, it, it gives us the opportunity to see that kind of processing with uh, Django okay now we're going to build that over the course of 10 or 11 weeks okay I don't want you to have to wait 10 or 11 weeks to see what can be built with Django. So the Django Girls tutorial is your chance to get on the scoreboard quickly, just like the Django Girls organization does with their, uh, with their uh, population, um, and, and get some real satisfaction. So mm, a lot of things you won't know exactly why you're doing or what the alternative approach is, might be and things that we'll discuss uh, later in our course. But what I really want to get for you out of week two is this uh, feeling that, uh, you know, this uh, Django is pretty easy to use and uh, it's pretty easy to learn. They even uh, teach it to people who are not very technical uh, and they can build a blog on their own. Gosh, this is cool. So that's our uh, 
that's our motivation for week uh, two. Okay. Uh, what do we deal with in week uh, three? Well, more Django girls. Okay. So the Django girls have this thing called the Django girls extension extensions which are uh, higher level features for the same block and um, they have it as as uh, they use it uh, two ways one is that the superstars who come to their one day event sometimes uh, blow right on through the tutorial by about uh, well lunchtime <laughs> okay so what are they going to do in the afternoon well, they're going to do the extensions, okay? Um, uh, what about the people who just have ordinary productivity in the Django Girls event? Uh, when would they do the extensions? That would be what they would work on when they get home. It's just a one day... Uh, um, one day experience, right? So you need something to work on when you get home. Uh, how would you get help on that? Well, uh, uh, most uh, coaches, uh, certainly I did, uh, give people their card and say, uh, keep in touch. And some people do and some people don't. Okay. But what are we going to do with the extensions? Well, we're going to wind up with an even more full-featured blog uh, at the end of the Django Girls extensions in week uh, three. Okay. Uh, now, what comes after week three? Well, it's under construction. It's under construction in the sense that uh, I don't have the content up, and I mentioned that before, but it should be up uh, pretty quickly. Again, uh, I've got two of these uh, going on at two different schools, so uh, uh, the time is of the essence. Um, what are, are we going to do starting in week four? Well, we're going to begin to build uh, easy university tutorial. Again, it's not a blog. Um, it's a database-oriented record-keeping system for... Um, a, a simplified university. So the courses aren't easy at EZU. Um, it's easy because we simplified the requirements. Okay. It's not easy to get into. It's not easy to get out of. Uh, it just has simplified uh, requirements, hence easy. Okay. Uh, and so it gives us a chance to have a database of uh, focus uh, Django is very strong at uh, database record keeping applications. Um, you know, to tell you the truth, if you just want to create a blog, um, you can go to WordPress. Okay, you don't need this sophisticated uh, platform to build a blog. Okay, um, now, can you build a more customized uh, blog in uh, Django that you can in WordPress? Sure you can. So, I mean, there's a lot of motivation to do this. But there's so many blog examples. I brought along EZU so we, we, could, we could focus on the database features. We could focus on uh, applications that need security and uh, different levels of authorization and that kind of stuff. Um, there's just a lot of features that we get to exercise pretty heavily that, um, well, that you could use in your day job. Okay. So uh, we're going to be working on uh, each of the weekly coding assignments is going to be part of the EZU tutorial um, uh, from... Uh, starting in week four and going to week mm, 13, uh, something like that. Um, what other things are you going to work on? Well, if uh, whether you're a graduate or, or undergraduate, 
you um, are expected to come up with your own final project. What, what's that supposed to be like? Well, it's supposed to be like easy university, at least in terms of the features that it uses and its overall size and uh, scope, okay? That's a pretty big system, okay? So not when, when we're working on uh, uh, easy university each week and we're learning new Django features and all that kind of stuff, we're not going to wait until we get to the very end of that in week 13 or 14 in order for you to start your final project. We're going to want you to... Let's say we start working on EZU in week four, right? So by week, certainly by week eight, we're going to want you to have started your final project, okay? Because uh, you can take the same development cycle for your final project that we're taking for EZU. You can just be a couple of weeks uh, behind, okay? If you're going to be... If you're going to build something of the size and scope of EZU for your own project, uh, you'll never get it done unless you're working uh, somewhere from two to four weeks behind uh, uh, the EZU work. Okay? So I'm going to be pushing you to come up with a project idea and get them something started pretty early in the semester. And what else do you have to do? Well, if you're, uh, if you're a graduate student, and uh, I think at least half of our people are, then you're expected to write a paper that evaluates a, uh, a web application framework uh, like Django, but not Django. Um, it's uh, evaluate its suitability for a particular set of requirements. Um, so I'm going to be working with the uh, graduate students uh, to help them. And that's going to be due, I think, in week 14 or 15. So you're going to be working on that at, at the same time. So what do you have to do for that? Well, you have to pick a set of requirements and uh, document those. Uh, you have to pick um, some framework other than Django. And then you have to do an evaluation and write a paper, okay? So there's going to be a lot of things going on at the same time. Once we get to EZU, we're going to be working on that, and then we're going to be working on the final project. And then for the graduate students, you're going to be working on your evaluation paper uh, all at the same time, okay? And my goal is to coach you through... Uh, the multitasking it's going to take to uh, have a good experience and uh, have a lot of fun. Now, one thing that I, I, I try to emphasize with people is uh, whenever I teach a programming course, uh, there's, a, there's a certain kind of student uh, who wants to do more, okay? They want to they want to experiment with features that we're not covering yet. They want to uh, in a web application. They want to change the styling. They want to change the interaction design. They want to change all this kind of stuff because um, some people just kind of want to show their stuff. Other people want to learn faster. Okay. I'm going to encourage you when it comes to the Django Girls uh, tutorials and Easy U, I'm going to encourage you to hold your creativity back and just do what we ask you to do. Uh, just have the features that we ask for, have it look exactly the way we've asked for. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you typically have to do in your day job. People don't are not as interested in your creativity or as your ability to build exactly what they've asked for. Um, now, 
you, what I want you guys to do is to save all your creative energies and juices for your final project. Okay. There's a lot more latitude in uh, the scope of the final project. Uh, could you learn a couple of extra Django features and kind of show off with that? Yeah, you should. Uh, 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 you could. So long as you show us the features that you're supposed to show us, you can show us more. Um, what, could you show us a different kind of interaction design? Sure you could. Could you show us a different kind of styling? Yeah, you could do that too. So think about this. To the extent that you want to have a creative experience in this class, save it all for your final project. Okay? Um, and I know for some people that's hard to do because they're just itching to be creative. Okay? It makes it a whole lot easier for us to grade and give you feedback and help you on the Django Girls and on the Easy U when we're all doing the same problem. Okay, um, so uh, hold on to your creativity and spend it all on your final project. Okay, that's that. All right, I promised to talk about the syllabus, so let's go find that. That's always in week one. Okay, course syllabus. So I'm going to download this so I can open the uh, PDF directly. Okay, so here we are. So let's kind of talk th through the syllabus. If I've already talked about whatever the item is, then I'll, I'll try to uh, not linger on it too much, okay? Uh, so, course title, Advanced Web ad ad Development Using Application Frameworks. Um, the application framework that we're going to be working with is Django. It's a back-end server-side framework. So we're really talking primarily about back-end server-side frameworks in this uh, course. Okay. Are we only talking about uh, Django? No, we're not. Uh, we, have a, we have a whole paper on some other framework that... Uh, um, uh, there's no perfect framework, okay? Uh, we like Django for this course for, uh, well, a whole bunch of reasons. One, it's uh, mostly Python. And uh, at the iSchool here, we're uh, concentrating on uh, Python. Uh, two, it's a very popular framework. It, it's pretty lightweight. It's very popular uh, and yet very, very uh, capable, okay? And it's fun, all right? Um, uh, are there other frameworks to be used? Yes, there are tons of them, okay? So what we're not out to do in this course is to teach you that the Django framework is the framework. Uh, we're, we're, uh, my point of view is uh, it's a good credible framework it's great for the purposes of this uh, course, but you ought to be thinking um, if in your day job, you're considering a framework for a set of requirements, what the paper is about is, well, how would I go about picking one? Okay, that's, that's what the paper is all about. So we're not saying this is one size fits all. Okay, let's see, we're in the spring, spring 2019. Um, we've got two sections. We, we don't have two sections full of people. One section is, I think, for graduates and one is for undergraduates. So um, it, it exaggerates your idea of how many people are in the course. It's a fairly intimately sized course. It's a three credit course. It's an online course. The two people who you're going to be working with, I'm the instructor. Julie Lisser is the TA. I have an office at SOAS, um, 3472. It's, it's on the main floor, the third floor. 
Um, I'm there on Mondays and Wednesdays when I have my on-campus courses. I'm there from about 8.30 till uh, 1.45, uh, something like that. Uh, occasional Fridays. Okay. Um, if you want to have a personal meeting, you could send a request for our help desk and you could, um, uh, you could either arrange to meet me in my office or you could meet, uh, uh, me or Julie on the GoToMeeting, uh, platform. If you want to have an individual meeting, okay. Uh, and you've got something confidential to talk about, just use the help desk and say you want an individual meeting and then you can say about something confidential, okay? Maybe it's not something you want to type into a help desk. I understand there are plenty of things like that, okay? But you can use the help desk to get the meeting without having to say, precisely the confidential information that you would like to discuss okay we'll believe you okay and if you need to talk to me and only me just say that okay very good okay let's experience the help desk a little bit okay uh the help desk is built on a product called uh, jira service desk um there is an individual help desk for every course I'm teaching. Okay. And uh, um, if you want to know more about the general capability, there are two links here. This one, this is iCourse Jira Service Desk and Introduction Page. They go to the same page. Okay. And, and they talk about uh, why I've taken this approach, uh, how to get started. And then I, I have a list of the uh, the help desk portals that are active uh, for, and I've divided it up since I teach at two schools, I wanted to make it easier for you to find um, the course uh, help desk portal for you. In addition to the individual courses, I have one for former students who are looking for recommendations. And I have one called the other that, uh, you know, maybe you just want to talk about something that doesn't fit into this, that uh, framework where that's a place for it to go. Okay, so you can click on any of these, like we're on info 691. If we click on there, we'll go to the portal for that help desk. Okay. Mm -hmm. How else could we find our way to the portal for that help desk? Well, uh, there is a link here, Request Center Portal for this course. If we click on here, that'll take us to the same uh, spot. Okay. Is everybody just going to plop onto the page we see here? Uh, no. Why not? Well, because this is a portal where you need to log in. Okay. Why do you need to log in? Well, this has to do why I use the help desk uh, portal to begin with. Um, people write emails and they'll say, uh, Kevin, uh, this is uh, Fred. I'm in your course. I'm really worried about the next assignment. When's that due? Uh, Fred. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what university Fred is at. Okay. When I look at my email, I can't tell. Okay. It doesn't, it, it just says, uh, Fred Smith. Okay. I have to click about two or three times to even find out what their email address is. Okay. So I don't know what school they're from. I don't know what course they're in. I'm teaching six. Okay. Uh, it's hard to remember all the names. I have, in a typical semester, I teach 140 students, something like that, quite a few, okay? Um, uh, uh, what's the deadline uh, for the assignment? Which assignment? 
I don't know. So uh, the thing that works about the portal is it, it coaxes students to leave enough information that I can help them immediately. I know who they are. I know what course they're in. I know what kind of question that they have. Uh, and we have a little bit of coaching information here that maybe they've left the right information. Okay. The other problem that I've had with email is I just lose uh, track of them. I probably get 300 emails a day. Uh, so it's very easy for me to, uh, to lose them. Um, so uh, if, in fact, you're not known to the help desk uh, product yet, um, you get a login screen. Okay, uh, and there's uh, something to click on to register. And uh, in my introduction page, I kind of give you the idea of what it means uh, to register. Okay, you have to give them a, an email address and uh, your name, and you have to pick a secure password and that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, once you've done that much, uh, when you click on this, you will come here. And there are uh, request uh, types, okay? The ones that I suggest, permission to register for course, course question, course infrastructure problem, maybe something has been posted right that was supposed to be posted for you. Uh, maybe this lecture you're expecting to be able to play it today, uh, you can't find it. Uh, course IT related help, uh, individual meeting requests, we talk about those. Deadline extension requests. Do you think you do one? Uh, why? Uh, make a request. We'll try see if it can be accommodated. Assignment regrading requests. Uh, at times, some people don't understand what grade they got and why. Uh, or they didn't hand it in on time, and then we forgot to go back and grade it when they finally handed it in. Uh, this is a reminder for us to uh, grade it. And then any other issue. So you click on this. Okay. By now, it knows who you are. It knows your name. It knows all that kind of stuff. Uh, the summary is like the uh, subject line. And the description uh, is like the email body. And you just say, uh, well, uh, say what you say. Okay. One of the really nice things is that you can attach uh, files. Okay. Well, what could you attach? Uh, some people will attach a screenshot, okay? Uh, we get to the point with people where we just say, uh, take, your, um, take your PyCharm uh, project, zip it up, and, uh, and attach it to the ticket on the help desk. And we just uh, uh, download it, we unzip it, and we kind of say, uh, what's wrong with this project? And then when, and then when we, we can get back to you and say, uh, you know, you need to configure that, you forgot to do this, you know, blah, 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 blah. So we get pretty good at taking code that people uh, give us uh, and being able to give you some pointers. And then you uh, create. And it becomes, uh, uh, it becomes a request or issue or ticket on the help desk. Okay. Now, to create a new uh, ticket or request, uh, you need to come to this uh, portal and do it, okay? Once we get going along, um, the, the server sends us email whenever there's any information that might interest us, okay? So for the, the first thing that you see, for instance, from... Um, uh, the iCourse uh, Jira email server is, oh, we got your request. We'll get right on it. 
And then it, uh, when it gets assigned to one of us, you'll see that change. Uh, and what will happen? Well, the email server will send you an email that said that it happened. If we comment on it, it'll send you an email. Uh, once the conversation's going, you should be able to do one of two things. Uh, click on a link in the email, and then it will log you in. It'll bring you to the login for your portal. Uh, and you can use this graphical user interface. Or if you just, uh, simply in your email client hit reply and, um, and uh, type uh, something that you would like us to see, uh, it's going to go back in and uh, be added as a comment to, uh, to the ticket or the, the request. The, the ability to upload and download attachments, I think, uh, you have to go to the web app. But it's, uh, it's uh, pretty capable stuff. This is a very popular product. The Atlassian software people have given it to us for free in order to, to explore uh, uh, the wonders of how to configure and use uh, help desk applications. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Okay, uh, one of the things that we like about the system is that, uh, for instance, uh, Julie's to tell you here, Julie and I can can uh, cover. We can both see the requests as they come through. Um, we can uh, we can assign it to ourselves, or we can assign it to the other person. We can collaborate with each other. We can message each, each other behind the scene and figure out what the you know what answer we want to send you back, and then one of us can send it back. So it really gives us the opportunity to help solve your problem in a team-oriented way that I think is pretty highly effective. Okay, let's see. We've talked about. Uh, online office hours lab sessions these are actually called online lab sessions uh, now this is some old text uh, individual meetings just ask for one uh, the description of this course I, th I think i described this course pretty well um, uh, these web application frameworks are they're pretty important uh, uh, beasts. Okay. Um, it's very hard to build a, uh, a significant web application from scratch, especially if you have to deal with, uh, all of the security and authentication. Um, also there's a bunch of other stuff, uh, 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 templating. Uh, most web application frameworks have some kind of templating engine. Uh, Django has a couple, uh, the original one of which we're going to use in our uh, course. Um, there's just all kinds of um, there's just all kinds of capabilities that are built into these web application frameworks that most people would not want to build themselves from scratch. Okay, so um, uh, 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 for me, the question isn't use a web application framework or not. It's pick the right web application framework for the job at hand. Okay, and we're addressing all those things. In the meantime, we're learning a lot about uh, Django, which is uh, popular and fun and free. And uh, did I say fun? Uh, the prerequisites for this course include experience with Python and uh, prior experience with uh, web uh, uh, development uh, using HTML and CSS. Okay, uh, experience with re relational databases is helpful, but not 
required. Um, we are going to we are going to we are going to focus on relational databases, but we're not going to use uh, SQL directly. Um, in uh, Django, what you do is you create these model classes, uh, and you interact with those. So those are the internal representation of the data. And the mapping of these internal objects to a relational database um, is done with uh, Django magic. Uh, so uh, does it help to understand relational databases? Yes, it does. Are we going to be coding SQL statements? Uh, no, we're not. OK. Um, we're going to go through, uh, well, we're going to go through all that fits into the course uh, against uh, when we're working on EZU. Uh, I think there there are 10 big assignments that we do. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot to be learned about this uh, kind of framework, and we we pick what I consider to be the most important ones, and we learn uh, those. Um, also, by the time that you're done, if you want to use some of the other features of Django, you've got the hang of it to the point that you'll be able to do that on your own. OK? Instructional methods, reading. Um, I try to give you a heads up in the reading, especially the uh, Pinkham book, about uh, Pinkham has this uh, kind of way of, uh, it's a popular teaching style. Uh, he does it one way, and he goes, well, that's not the best. And he does it the next way. Well, that's better, but it's not perfect. And he does it the next way. And by the time you're done with the chapter, he's on his uh, sixth uh, different uh, way. Um, I try to point out, before you do the readings, uh, which parts to uh, concentrate on. Uh, and I think that helps. Uh, and uh, the approach that we take is that uh, when we're doing easy university, uh, when you're following my tutorials we we pick a way and we do it in any particular week we're doing things a particular way uh, you know we don't show you three or four alternatives and then we say the last one's the best um, now you can read all that in the pinkham book though the recorded uh lectures the lectures for the most part are going to be some comments to get you oriented before you do the reading and the tutorials are going to be, for the most part, um, uh, follow the leader stuff on uh, easy university. Uh, detail of forums, we've got, we've got two discussions on the detail forum. That's going to be your participation grade. Uh, the online lab sessions I've already talked about. Uh, they're optional, but I, I think they're useful, so come by. And uh, designing, coding, testing, and deploying a full-featured uh, Django application. You're really going to be doing that uh, more than once, uh, okay? You could argue you do it the first time with the Django girls, uh, okay? Uh, you definitely do it when you do Easy University. And then, of course... You're going to do it again on your own project. OK, so say uh, two and a half times you're going to do this. It's it's a bunch of coding. It's it's a lot of fun. And uh, you really know how to build stuff when it's done. Now, the time expectations, this is going to be different for different uh, people. OK. Um, uh, first of all, uh, some people are going to be more interested in reading through uh, in the Pinkham book every variation that he teaches. Okay, well, that's going to up your reading time. I'm going to try to save you a bit of that, but uh, you can uh, decide. Okay, uh, second of all, 
Um, some of you are going to be better programmers than others when you start. Okay. Um, it's going to go faster for you and slower for others. Okay. Um, uh, so how long exactly this is going to take you is going to depend upon how fast you are. For the really fast uh, people, I, I think you'll beat that 144 hour. Uh, for people who who need who need more help uh, and need to work at it more deliberately, uh, deliberately, it will take more time than that. Okay, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. We believe that people come in in like all uh, of all abilities. Okay. If you have the prereqs, you ought to be able to learn this stuff. And um, it'll be easy for some, average for some, hard for others. But we're here to get you through it. Uh, the text. So the Pinkham text is the main text, OK? We are not going to be doing the tutorial that's in the Pinkham text. You can, if you want to, you can download the code from their Git uh, repository, and you can try to run their code. I mean, I actually did that the first time I went through the course, and I, and I think I learned a lot that way. I'm not going to make you do that. Um, uh, but the, there's, uh, there's a lot of good writing about uh, Django in the Pinkham book. And uh, I still think it's a great book, even though we're not doing that exact uh, tutorial. Uh, the Pro Git book is, is a, a reference on Git. Um, you're going to need to be, uh, you're going to need to use uh, Git in order to, to uh, deploy. We're eventually going to deploy our project uh, the easy university uh, project onto uh, Python anywhere. And to do that, you need to use uh, Git. So I already talked about the requirements. We're going to use uh, uh, PyCharm uh, Professional, we're going to use Anaconda, we're going to use uh, Git. Um, I've given you links to all that stuff. I've given you some tutorials. Uh, there's a link here to our schedule. Okay. Um, the readings, I'm going to expect you to do the readings at the beginning of the week, right? Um, uh, 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 the lecture videos, they're kind of going to, they're kind of going to be briefings. So it might be good to play those before you do the readings. Okay. Uh, a lot of times what I talk about is, is, uh, just what I think the most important things are in the readings. Okay. Um, the coding assignments are going to be uh, uh, follow the leader kind of uh, things where we're going to be working on the easy university tutorial. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do uh, the skill for uh, some of the parts. And then uh, what I typically do is to say, OK, We've done three together. Now you do the other five or six on your own. OK, so that's what you can expect uh, there. But uh, pretty detailed uh, follow with the leader uh, kind of kind of help on on uh, on the ones that we do together. OK. Um, there's a deal on the uh, coding assignments, it says uh, this. If you do your coding assignment on time, okay, uh, and hand it in by the deadline, and if you make a good faith effort on all parts, and if you 
format and name your file the right way and we can we can we can test your work um and you make a good faith effort on all that then if it's in on time it'll get in uh it'll get at least in 85. if it's late uh it can't get more than an 84. uh what's the reason for that well really two one is when it comes to the submission at, at deadline, I, I publish the answers. So it's a lot easier to fix, uh, figure things out when, when I've already published the code. Uh, two, this is where we think the learning actually goes on. If you, if you do the work yourself, when you do the work yourself, that's how you learn. Because uh, you get turned around about stuff you run into questions and in getting uh you know getting yourself out of trouble you'd learn a ton of stuff okay so uh follow the directions name everything the right way make a good faith effort on all the parts hand it in on time and your homework average will automatically be 85 or greater okay the participation has to do with your work on, on the two forums. Uh, introduce yourself uh, uh, is to be done in week one, and next uh, steps is to be done in week 10. Okay? Um, okay, so the final project. So, you're expected to do a project about the size of EZU, okay? Uh, ideally, we want it. It should have it should have a significant uh, database uh, component, okay? I don't want you to create something uh, that you could have done with WordPress, okay? I don't want you to. I, I pretty much am not interested in uh, blogs. I'm blogged uh, to death. And uh, again, I'm, I'm not sure how wise it is, unless you're creating a blogging product, I'm not sure how wise it is to create your own blog from, uh, from scratch. Why don't you just install WordPress and go ahead and do it? Uh, we're trying to fry a bigger fish, okay? On the other hand, we want, um, uh, we want this to be something that you're interested in. You could be interested in it for a couple of reasons. One, it, it could be a hobby. Uh, two, it could be helping a friend. Uh, three, uh, it could be a portfolio piece that you want to show people when you go out um, and and try to get your next uh, job, right? Um, um, uh, it doesn't have to be the most unique high-tech solution to something, right? It can be a pretty ordinary application if, in fact, it, it does the kinds of things it's supposed to do. And what are the kind of things it's supposed to do? Well, uh, like Easy University, it's uh, supposed to have... A, a significant database record keeping aspect uh, to it uh, with full uh, functionality, full CRUD functionality, create, read, update, uh, delete. Okay. Um, it, 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 it should, uh, it, it should do a fairly sophisticated job of user authentication and permissions. Certainly EZU does, okay? Uh, we'd like to see you be able to show that you know how to do that too, okay? So while I say I want you to use your creativity on your final project, uh, what I don't want is, is a, you know, a small unique, high-tech idea that, uh, one, isn't 
hasn't really got size and scope, and two, doesn't show all the features that we learned. Uh, okay, this is, uh, um, again, I want you to have fun, but I want you to be able to demonstrate that uh, you've learned uh, what we did in class. Uh, the framework evaluation paper we'll talk about more, certainly amongst the graduate students. Um, uh, again, uh, it should be the evaluation of a, of a back-end uh, framework, uh, like the Django framework. Uh, I've had some people do evaluations of front-end frameworks. Uh, that's fine, okay? But uh, then you have to talk about what you're going to use for the back end, okay? I need a, I need a total uh, solution, okay? Uh, so we'll talk a bit more about the final project as we move along. Uh, the grading. Uh, the grading uh, weights for undergraduates and graduates are different. So for undergraduates, the coding assignments are worth 45% of the grade. The final project is worth 50% of the grade. Uh, participation is worth 5% of the grade. That's the, the posts in the forum. Uh, for graduate students, the coding assignments are 30% of the grade. The framework evaluation uh, paper is 33% of the grade. The final project is 32% of the grade. Participation is 5% of the grade. And the differences between the requirements for graduates and undergraduates are uh, pretty strictly um, prescribed by the graduate school, the graduate college. So. Uh, this might seem like a weird way for these to have uh, different weights, but it's uh, sort of the nature of the university's uh, requirements for these uh, combined under undergraduate and grad uh, courses. There has to be a significant piece of work that's only done by graduate uh, students, uh, and it has to be worth uh, about a third of the grade. So that's how this is how we wound up uh, where we are. Uh, this mapping of the letter grades to the number grades is pretty standard stuff. Uh, the very last part is is uh, uh, kind of humdrum and kind of exciting and important. Uh, how humdrum? Well, humdrum in the following way. Okay. This is boilerplate. This should be exactly the same on the syllabus for every course that you're taking. Um, if it's a, 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 a different, it should not be by much. So if you understand it, you understand it. On the other hand, these are really important things. OK? Um, what kind of help do we have with students with disabilities? Uh, people who have uh, different religious observances. Um, students in the military who are called to active uh, duty. Um, incompletes. Uh, people are usually surprised to learn how tough the rules are at UWM for getting a grade of incomplete. Uh, of all the places I've attended or taught, this is, is the strictest uh, set of rules for that. So you should definitely, you should definitely understand that. Discriminatory conduct such as sexual harassment. This is really important stuff. Um, it's very important in the university today for people to uh, to be able to be themselves and feel safe. Um, sometimes uh, that gets uh, challenging, and when it does, uh, well, it's it, 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 it is our goal 
and responsibility to set expectations for uh, behavior and uh, mutual respect that uh, gets the job done. Uh, academic misconduct, very important. Uh, issues here. Essentially, I want you all to hand in your own work. Okay, I'll talk when I get done with the section. I'll say a little bit about what the exceptions to that are in our course. Uh, complaints. You may have complaints. You may have grade appeals. Uh, you have all these kinds of things. Uh, if you have questions about any of these things, I'd, I'd be glad to help you with them. Uh, if you are, uh, if you fall into one of these uh, categories and you need help, uh, contact me. If I can't help you directly, I'll put you in touch with the people who can. Okay, so uh, again, kind of humdrum if you've seen it before and you understand it. Very important stuff, though. Um, um, academic misconduct, okay? We expect you to do your own work and hand in your own work, okay? Now, uh, then how much can we uh, collaborate? Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that I said is uh, at, the, at the end of every week, I'm going to publish my solution, okay? If you want to take my solution from the week before and then build the next week on top of it, well, I gave it to you. That's that's a fair game. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, can you take somebody else's code and do that with that? Uh, no, you can't. You have to hand in your own code. Okay. Well, can we help each other? Yes, you can help each other. Okay. Um, which is to say... Uh, uh, can somebody uh, post reform, for instance, and show, uh, you know, the errors that they're getting or some code that doesn't seem to be working? Yes, they can. Okay, and we can show that. We can see that together. Um, is it okay to, uh, to post a, a helping reply that gives um, some... Uh, snippets of code to get them back on track. Yeah. Uh, sh could you give them a line of code? Yes. Could you give them three lines of code? Yes. Could you give them five lines of code? Maybe. Can you give them the whole program? No, don't give people the whole program. They're never going to learn. Okay. So we want to have a discussion. We want to help each other, but we want everybody to we want them to type in their own code and hand in their own work. And then, of course, it, with, the, uh, uh, with the paper, it's, it's the same deal. Um, could you collaborate with people if you and somebody else are uh, evaluating the same framework? Are you allowed to talk to each other? Yeah. Could you, could, could you recommend some resources to each other yeah could you discuss them together yeah uh can you can you share parts of your writing uh no you, you have to write it yourself and hand it in yourself okay so again we're trying to be uh collaborative um and uh, kind of the sense that people are in the workplace uh, so they don't do each other's work uh, for themselves. Uh, people don't hand in the work of some coworker and act like it's uh, theirs. But do they get help from coworkers? Yeah, they do. Do uh, coworkers uh, sit down and do all their work for them? No, they don't. It's just not the way it works. Okay, so the rules, uh, the rules that we have in this course are. Uh, we allow a reasonable amount of collaboration like we would in the workplace. And those are the expectations. Okay, so we've come to the end here, and that's uh, pretty much the end of my uh, 
uh, introductory lecture. There's plenty more to come. Um, I think this is a lot of fun. I I, I love uh, Python. I love uh, Django. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with this course. Um, I, I use to the extent that I get time to build any applications. I use this uh, framework uh, myself. Um, I'm very interested in in all this uh, stuff. Um, there's a lot of hands-on. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we expect that uh, some people will need more help than others. Uh, feel free to be in touch. Um, remember to come by the, the online lab because uh, uh, that's a good opportunity to get some help and, uh, and to talk through some ideas for projects or uh, papers. Okay? So that's it for now. I'll talk to you again soon. Good night.